This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and if sometimes in the arena to be the one in best of one, you must play the decks that you don't really, you don't really want to play them. You, you got to figure it out, right? Is the deck actually good? Or does it just seem good? Does it just look good? Does it just seem really good when it's happening to you? When my opponent plays turn one Flourishing Fox, turn two Valiant Rescuer, and turn four, five, six, whenever it is, Zenith Flare your face for a million. Is that deck actually good? Because when it happens to me, I get salty and I feel this bad and I wonder why am I not playing this cycling deck? Oh my gosh, it's such... It's such a great, easy deck to play, and you get all these free wins. But does it actually win? That's why you gotta try, sometimes dive in and try it out and share the information with all of you. So today we are playing Cycling. Yeah, I hate this deck. For me, this deck is a one-note trick, and it's insanely boring, redundant, and it holds priority forever, annoying in the way that Cat Oven was. But is it effective? That's what's really important. Let's look at the makeup of the deck really quickly. These are cards that you primarily... Let, let, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build some piles. I'm going to build some little piles for you. So first up, these are your creatures. You always want to have an opening hand with one of these because they are the threats, the ones you actually want to play. Flourishing Fox, of course, is amazing. Valiant Rescuer, cranking out one ones, is very, very good. They can overwhelm the opponent, and the Stinger can just get them dead. So you always want one of these in your opening hand. If you don't have these, you should mulligan. Doesn't mean I will. I'm kind of a loopy guy, but... um. Yeah, you should probably mulligan for one of these cards and the mana to cast it. Next up come the cards that you will usually cycle. Dranith Healer is a card that you can play. I put it out a few times in the mirror. It might be helpful against gain and drain decks like Sacrifice. But for the most part, you want to be cycling this card, not casting this card. Gopher Blood is the closest thing to a removal spell besides Zenith Flare itself. And this can help you uh, remove a few threats when combined with a Flourishing Fox. And maybe you use a Gopher Blood with your Stinger to take out an Innkeeper, something like that. Most of the time you will cycle it. Footfall Crater can give trample to a giant fox. If a fox lives long enough to become huge, but the opponent has 1-1 one, one blockers, like in a cycling mirror, Footfall Crater can break your fox through for the damage. So these are probably 80 to 90% of the time cycles that you might cast sometimes. These are cards that cycle for one mana. That is the only reason they're in the deck. We don't cast them. Like, pretty much ever. You'll see in the video, I experimented with a few different builds. I had a build that ran Triomes, the Mardu and Jeskai Triome. Just in case we wanted to cast these, it wasn't worth it. That adding the tap lands to the deck was definitely not worth it. Do not recommend. Just play these, cycle them 100% of the time. You're welcome. Don't be, fat. Don't be flashy. Zenith Flare, win the game. The only way that the opponents usually beat Zenith Flare is by countering it, and there aren't many good counters in the format, and by removing the graveyard. So, uh, how to play the Flare when somebody is hating on your graveyard is interesting. There are ways to still win if things go perfectly right. We get into some of that in the video. I think you'll find it potentially interesting. Then we've got the land. 18. I tested 20 when I was having some land problems. You always flood. 18 is the answer. And I like Fabled Passage. I like not ever worrying about having a tapped land, and I like further thinning the deck once we get to four lands. So I'm, I'm really big into Fabled Passage over the other lands. You don't have any double red or double white costs. You don't have any hybrid mana costs. You just... Like, you don't need the winds, you don't need the Temple of Triumph, you know what I mean? You don't need the Triome. Just run Passage, thin your deck even more, make it even less likely you're going to flood out. And it's untapped after turn four so that you don't run into, I need a land to cast a Zenith Flare. Oh, it's a tapped land. GG's. We avoid that. 
So for me, it's Fabled Passage. Now, how to make the clickbait level zero rare deck that uh, people like to promote for the budget players. All you got to do is take out the Fabled Passages and add either basic lands, which there's something to be said for just adding basics, or you can add, uh, I think it's Windswept Heath is the land that is a common, uh, the gain land you can add to this deck. The other thing that you can do if you want to is Cutler is from the sideboard. I experimented with all of these. Like there's a few games in the video where I have Luris in my sideboard, there's games when I don't. There's games when I have Fable Passage in the deck, there's games when I don't. I imagine even if you're on a budget, you have probably crafted Fabled Passage because it can go in every kind of deck so you don't have to ever craft temples, really. You can just play passages. And I think this is one of the best crafts if you're looking for that information. Along with Luris, Luris is an excellent craft, can be played in a variety of interesting decks, but neither of these are necessary. And if you want to cut these and play a no rare whatsoever budget deck, get to Mythic and just flare people in the face. Ha 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 ha, nice Uro chump. You can do that. Uh, you can definitely do that. So now that I've introduced the deck, talked about all you need to know about it, there's actually a fair amount of tips and tricks with the deck that we'll get into in the game. So I hope you enjoy this video. Check it out, and I'll see you at the end for the cool kids. Let's dive in and let the nonsense begin. We don't have to mulligan this hand, and we're going first. So great. We don't have the, the best one drops, of course. No Fox, no Rescuer, but we've got a Stinger. Stinger can sometimes solo this. Triumph from the opponent, no fun. Stinger central, by the way. What happens when you keep a hand relying on Stinger? You draw two more. It's amazing, so amazing. Goes for the birth. The birth of Menetus. Second Stinger. So much damage will be taken on this day. No Deafening Clarion. That was the first thing that I said I had to dodge. So, I don't think we play another creature. I think we just go cycle crazy. Still trying to hit a land for this turn. Haven't found it yet. Nope. We're gonna miss this land drop. The opponent is at 8, though. Well, they're at 10. Here's the shaft. Still no land. Play another Stinger. We could also play out the Fox, but then we get no value from the Stinger, and we miss another land drop. Yep. Glad we cycle. Glad we cycle. The opponent, if they kill this... The Zenith Flare is lethal. So let's see what they do. Red mana. What kind of Jeskai deck are you? So far we haven't seen too much. Say go. Alright. Coming at you. Omen. Sure. Could try to flare them right there. There's still a number of things they could have. And if I just take my time here. I don't think they can possibly manage the beating that they will suffer. Plus, they can't tap out at all or they die. And they tap out and they die. If you're going to play control and you want to beat cycling, you have to have something to either counter the flare cheaply, which doesn't exist very much in this format, miscast maybe, um, or you have to exile a graveyard. I really recommend Soul Guide Lantern or Fey of Wishes with Tormod's Crypt in the sideboard. <laughs> I think calling this a risky hand would be an understatement. It might just work though. 
on the draw? Let's see what happens. I've got to mute your dog. It's going to kill me. All right, come on, lands. Let's go. Land to the top. Land to the top. Yeah, play, play Clover. Good, good choice. You know, good choice. Whiff. So we need to double flare them before they Fay of Wishes for Tormod script. If if all of us are on the up and up here, like if we all understand what's really going on in the matchup, that is that is what's happening. Playing into their Bone Crushers, Brazen Borrowers, it's just pointless. And if I had hit an untapped land, I could have memory leaked or tried to hit their Fate of Wishes before this key turn, but that's not happening. Huh? Right. Once again, we'll have to find a land somewhere in the next few cycles. There's a good one. Not going to try to rescue, not going to try to do anything other than flare this game. Flare is the only way. So the opponent can do everything they might want to do. But if we start flaring next turn and they don't find a way to stop it, we'll be okay. 13. They say go. Alright, we got to hit that land drop. We really have to. Bingo. Oh, we're cracking the passage. What could it be? I'm guessing their hand is like Brazen Borrower, Bone Crusher Giant, the usuals. There comes the Borrower. So one, two, three. Are we dead? 11? We are if they have a, a giant. Oh man, that tap land really got us. Or that one missed land drop. Alright, you got the giant? I don't know what else would be in their hand, so it makes sense. Yep. Boo! Raced us. They just straight raced us. Best hand ever. <laughs> Talk about cycling, man. What a deck. What a deck. You just you get to keep hands like this that no human being should keep. It is not great. We are behind. We have uh, Dranith Stinger on the draw, which is not even close to as good as any creature on the play. But when we cycle, we deal the damage to a thing. So, Mirror Shield. Plus O, oh, plus two. Whenever this creature with death touch blocks or becomes blocked, we destroy it? Okay. That's a draw. Very good draw. The Flames and the Valiant Rescuer. Gemstone Recluse. This is a 2-3 Mutate. Whenever this creature mutates, put two counters on it. Okay. Let's play a Stinger. Let's cycle. And I think I attack. Or do I care about these counters? I mean, if the opponent has no board, I don't think they can beat me. And if they take damage, I don't think they can beat me. So, yeah, you just get them. Get in there. 
opponent has made the recluse hexproof. Let this be a message to all of you. Playing double stinger sounds nice, but I'd much rather hit my land drop, so away we go. Healer, sure. Ambush, cycle you. Alright, we want to have... I guess they might dry block the stinger. So, yeah, we've got a land to play afterwards, and we want to cycle something on the, on their turn if we still have the rescuer. So, what you got? Block the stinger. Might as well get one more damage. Cycling go face. Cycling always face. Endless cycles for face. Yeah. Yeah. Cycling's a beating, man. So mutate with mirror shield. Uh not the not the version I'd endorse. What a hand. <laughs> Mono flare hand. Easy. Opponent's gonna start with a caves. One life. We'll see if that helps you. The thing I like about not having the companion is the opponent doesn't know what I'm playing. And the stick makes them think I have things like shock, so maybe they play around it. I'm not saying that's actually good. I'm saying it's an option. Alright, they've got the lamb pad. I'm thinking I might not even want to play a creature. The creatures just get claimed and removed. I don't think this deck can interact or clock me fast enough, so I'm pretty sure I just want to flare the face. The fact that we're already on four lands too means I could run out of things to cycle, which is kind of scary. Kind of scary, very scary. And I'm trying to think of what the Rakdos deck might actually do to interact with me. Usually the best thing they can do is try to get Croxa going too quickly. The Valiant Rescuer isn't bad, and now we've drawn enough spells that it feels like I could play this. I just think it will get stolen used against me. I'm probably just better off cycling, right? This goes up to six, the next turn it goes even higher. Yeah, the opponent's not putting any pressure on me and they probably have plenty of ways to remove stuff. Let's just play the double flare game. Lame, it's, I'm, I'm not saying it's cool. It's a thing you gotta do sometimes. Their hand is probably claim the firstborn and ways to steal and sack things. Now they're going to play Ayaya. So they're going to gain a little life, which is pretty solid. Uh-oh. Are those lands? Are we drawing land? No! That's too many of them. Too many land. What? Did I just draw three land in a row with this deck? Did that really just happen? What is the world coming to? All right, now I definitely have to cycle these. I'm so glad I didn't play them. I would be, I would be just dying. Bastion. Well, I don't plan to kill your things. Haha. -ha. Opponent can kill their own things though, and they can gain a lot of life doing it. This might be a triple flare job. Look at all those little points of life they're stacking up. Fourteen. Startling development. Indeed. And land! And land! Are you kidding me? Alright. We're on the flare road. It's, it's come to this. But we're looking at 20-some. Very curious if the opponent can take all of them. Or if we're going to draw into more cycling. That can gain life too, and everything that dies gains life, and the lamp pad gains a lot of life. It seems to me at this point that they can take a flare or two. What a weird race. Down to nine. Nine to twenty-four.
You are probably hearing a cat in the background. The little monster. The monster kitten Lupin. Just won't stop crying when mom is out of the house. You might have to listen really closely for that. I'm, I don't know. All right, let's start the flarings. Opponent is deep in the tank. They roped out most of this turn, and now they're roping again. They might be thinking, when do I have to start sacrificing my creatures? I wouldn't do it till the last possible moment, personally. Or do they have nine damage here? Do they actually have it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, maybe they do. Maybe I didn't math when they played that scorpion and I was supposed to respond to the scorpion being on the stack. Oh yeah, sack the lamp pad and that's it. They got there. I'm an idiot. Keep! Stinger or rescuer? Usually rescuer. Rescuer, the true hero of Precinct 1. Opponent usually has to get rid of that, or there will be a lot of 1-1s. One Is this Adventures? Yep. Let's go. So, can they fail wishes for a Tormod script, or will we beat them before that happens? That's really all we need to know here. Do we attack with the rescuer? No. No, we make them deal with it. Although they usually can. This is usually plenty of bone crusher gianty stuff going on. Brazen Borrower is also pretty annoying. We do not want to be investing our mana in these creatures after turn two. We want to be investing the mana in drawing more cards. <clears throat> getting the flare going. Double flare. Ready to roll. Love it. Don't think I need to take out this innkeeper. Let them have their cards. As long as we get to burn their face. Alright, we have not found a creature or we haven't found a land yet. But we'll work on that. Opponent falls to 13. Here's the giant. Draw a card. We, we skipped the scary turn four Fae of Wishes moment. All right, cycle, cycle, land. <laughs> Try to find land. Deal that damage, there you go. All right, now what? We could play the Stinger and do two, or we could cycle these three and block. That should be enough, yeah, that should be enough. No, they did it, they did it. That's game, guys. All right. I guess we can try to work on the crypt. Um, but if they'll just let the flare resolve if we're not careful. We've got to get them in range. Let's see. If they let a flare resolve and they're at six, then maybe a stinger can finish them. I don't think that's very good, though. All right. So we've got to cycle a little bit. And it also keeps the damage going. Tick-tock. Another rescuer. It's interesting. Yeah, we can threaten to lethal them. Now they have to crack the crypt, and then we start rebuilding, I suppose. We have Lethal Flare, but they just exile the graveyard in response. But we still have our Stinger. Can the opponent find a removal for it? Seems like they have a Brazen Borrower or something. Alright, Flare you. 
Crypt fired off. Now we start rebuilding. And, oh, nice. So this will go to the graveyard after. Good. We kind of needed that. We needed the cyclers in the graveyard. They should have uh, done it in the other order. They're the beatdown now. They're going to try to close the game before we can rebuild graveyard. This is unfortunate. I really wanted to play this and cycle some other stuff, but we drew too many land. We drew too many land. It's a race against time. Can our our opponent, if they have another... Okay, so now they go get the card with Adamant, right? And that's game? Maybe? We might be able to sneak a flare in there and then draw another stinger. Yeah, there's once in future. Just the attack. All right, cycling? It, it needs to be cycling. It's a fox. Not what I wanted to cycle, really, but there you go. All right, go for blood. All right, startling development. Oh, it's so close. Ah, another one. Okay, pass. We'll make them do the adamant thing for the crypt. But I mean, we're in a place where we just need two cyclers in a row. Can't believe we're still playing this game. Alright, once in future, they did pay Adamant their targeting Crypt and Fable Passage. Burn them. Down to two, up to 21. So now what we need is the Stinger. Um, we need another Stinger. Or, I think we've get drawn all the flares, right? No, there's still one more flare. All right. Cycle. Hope the opponent pops it off at a weird time for no reason. We're definitely living on the edge here. All right, play land. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. So now what we have to do is draw the last flare and have eight mana so that we can respond to the cracking of the crypt with the flare itself. 28 cards in the deck. Pretty unlikely we'll draw the fourth flare, but who knows. And the opponent's putting up the right, like, a really good clock. I think this is over next turn, so it's got to be a top deck. Rescuer. Rescuer not gonna rescue us. See if it blocks here, which it won't. Like they're definitely going to remove it. Their hand is just all gas. So we need what? I don't think there's anything we could draw here. Alright, good game. Let's keep it. Three lands. How did these things happen? It doesn't really matter, though. Stinger will, will carry the day. Won't you, Stinger? Won't you, Stinger? Send a message. Nah, usually should just wait, but... I'm a maniac. Feeling frisky today. We got the double flare draw. Bang, bang. Opponent passes turn, play the land in case they want to kill this at instant speed, and attack. Get him! Attack, Lance, Paragon. Epic. Alright. I was wondering what it could be. I guess Black Lance Paragon's as good as any. Ooh. Hello. Should we take the damage from this now, or play the Rescuer? It's a good question. Usually when I don't play these creatures, though, I end up regretting it. Maze Mind Tome, okay. That's a slow card.
Nick 1-1. One, one. All right, still want to hit the land drop, though. Try not to miss those. Nice. Right where you want it, too. <laughs> Elspeth's best nightmare. Okay. Uh, that hits the graveyard. Not cool, man. Not cool. But we've got a we got a turn. It also takes a flare. Oh god, it takes one of the flares. Oh, oh, not cool, man. All right, that is a pretty brutal card, actually. At least it doesn't kill the rescuer. I've got we've got that going for us. Maybe we have to play this fox because that graveyard is going bye bye. Alright, starting in development, we know we want to play one of the flares. We don't want to get absolutely nothing for our flare efforts. Let's crack before we even cycle. Thin the deck, thin the deck. Those lands are the, are evil, we don't want to draw them. I don't think we play the fox though. I think the fox has to wait. And then we don't actually flare the opponent until this triggers on the stack, right? Which is the next turn, since they're going to take one of these anyway. So maybe we do play the fox. Ah, the opponent's just going to wrath. What are we talking about here? What are we doing? I don't have the mana to go flare, flare without one of them getting taken, so I may as well let them take it. And then flare with the other at the last possible moment before the nightmare occurs. They are in a lot of danger, though. They have to wrath or something here. It looks like they're not. They can make a 1-1 one, one to block the 3-1, but, I mean, is that really good? I don't know. I don't think that's too good. Save the rescuer. Keep cycling, though. Try to make the most of this particular flare. Epic. Oh, the opponent knows. They're going to die to the flare and the 1-1s. One they could make a 1-1 one, one to block the 3-1, but the rest is going to kill them. This is a pretty bad hand, and it's on the draw, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Home your night, let the party begin. Stormfist on two. All right, Rakdos Knights on the play. Looks like they're a million miles ahead already. I'm not sure how this matchup plays out. I'm pretty sure a good beatdown deck usually smacks me. And especially if they're just like, play, play, kill your first play, the game's already over. Okay, so it's Clover Knights. All right, so they have a they have a kind of a combo finish as well with the Smitten Swordmaster. Valiant Rescuer showing up at a a good time. Opponent has Shock or Rimrock Knight. Pretty obvious. Let's see, this is my turn three, so I already played a land. We can say go. Hold up the ability for a surprise if the opponent forgets about any of it. Okay, they don't have double black for Murderous Rider, which I'm sure is in their repertoire. Repertoire. Okay, the sword mastering begins.
They built their own Zenith Lair. What a champ. Alright, they did forget about the ability. Or they don't care. I, I would think that they'd want to keep their knight on the field. Infuriate, not Rimrock Knight. Although I'm sure Rimrock Knight is there as well. And maybe Embercleave. Alright, so if they have another Swordmaster, we lose anyway. There's a variety of ways that we lose anyway. I think the best thing to do is play the other healer and cycle and try to hit our land drop. Nice. Alright. I'll save it for next turn, but I'm just going to crack it now. Just so that the opponent can't do anything and then I have to respond to it. Down to five. Opponent with a temple. Stride to the top, play the smitten. Hmm. This doesn't look that threatening. No attack. They remembered the ability this time, and now we get our life total back, and this is really good. This is starting to look alright. There's a flare off the top. What do we do? Do we want a fox here? Or do we just want to cycle like crazy? I think we just want to cycle. We want all the life we can get. And I don't think we hold up flare. It's not strong enough yet. We're working on that, though. And we still could hit a land drop, so I'm going to do at least some cycling this turn. There we go. Now it can wait. Attacks aren't particularly good. The two 1-1s, one this just blocks here, gains two life, this box here. Let's just say next. End of the turn. We have, we're, we're getting on the flare plan now. Man, the healers actually turned out really clutch. When I'm on the draw, I might give a lot more respect to a hand with a healer, because if the opponent doesn't kill it, good things seem to be happening. Rankle is strong. <laughs> Rankle is a scary card. All right, let's do some cycling now. Get the life total up. Two flares. So, what are you gonna do, Rankle? You gonna make me draw? Yep. Keep the life coming, keep the cards coming. The opponent's at 15. They're kind of at 14 because of the Stormfist Crusader. These are at 9. If we attack with everything, they can go up to virtual 16. I guess they could also block with this. Let's see, if they blocked here and here, they would take 6. And then this would be 7, 8. Depending what goes to the graveyard. It could be lethal. Yeah, it's time. Let's see how they respond. We definitely want to at least cycle one before the rescuer dies to get the token. So I have to remember to do that. We've got some interesting blocks coming. I don't think they know how dead they are, or they don't care. Sometimes you can't play around things, I understand. All right, flare you. Dracarius. Oh! Nice. If you enjoyed this moment, leave a covert go green in the comments. Will we draw the land? Nah. Take a shot at a two-lander. The, the shuffler is on your side. Keep... 
All right, flare to the bottom. Fox, you get to play turn one fox on the play. I've got to mute your dog, it drives me crazy. Second fox, see, bottoming the flare is big brain. Don't try to tell me otherwise. There's a mountain. Bang. So, one of these probably dies to a Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, the opponent has something that grows of their own. A Sprite Dragoon. Begin the Cyclotron. This one's going to probably sting. Is it turn three? Take eight. Holy crap. Holy crap, the fox draws. Yep. Yep. The snowball. We've been brazen borrowed. How dare you. How dare you borrow my fox. All right. Um, now we make this big, hit the opponent with it, find a land, and flare them. GG's. All right, Fox. Boom. Three planes. Not quite as ecstatic about three planes, but it's going to be fine. Fox, Stinger, boom. On the play. The opponent doesn't even know it's coming because there's no Luris here. They're not mulliganing, you know, looking for a glass casket or whatever. They don't, they don't know. They don't know how dead they are. They don't understand. Have you ever cycled your fox on turn one when you meant to cast it? I've never done that. But I can imagine it would suck. Adventures from the opponent, possibly? Let's go. Let's fight. You feeling brazen? Do we play this into a Bone Crusher Giant? I guess. We are at risk of flooding out, and it scares me. Not gonna lie. Probably should have played the planes if I wanted to recast the box after a Brazen Borrower. That was an oops. Well, now we have the rescuer doing doing the work, making a nice wide board. We can also play we can we can play the stinger and the fox, but we're on six land in our you know 18 land deck, so we got some problems. Opponent with a nice double brazen draw to just keep all pressure to an absolute minimum. So which creatures do we play? I think we play the fox. Because if the opponent had a Bone Crusher Giant, they would have used it. And I think we play the Stinger. And we go get the other mountain. In the deck. Let me just do this now. Why waste time? We haven't found a Zenith Flare yet. Now is the part where we find out if our opponent has Fae of Wishes for Tormod's Crypt on turn 4. Again. They always have it. When I play, they always have it. Okay, it's a clover. It's two clovers. Good golly. But look at that draw. That is a good draw. That is not a good draw. We have a big choice here. I think the opponent can't take the turn off to use Fae of Wishes. If they do, they're going to die to the creatures. So we need to cycle the rescuer. Another land? I thought I'd get more out of it than that land. 
I thought I'd get a lot more out of it than that. What a flood! But it looks like the opponent's just dead here. They don't have the tools, they didn't draw the Fey. Bang bang. It has a turn one fox, let's go. Probably against Mutate, Mechanic Showdown. Here's the fox, what's that fox say? Here he at it. Good little ramp bit here. Send in the fox, anybody? So I don't think we're trying to gain life. I think we're trying to deal damage, just flare them out. They don't have a lot of room in their deck for nonsense. So they probably don't have a lot of ways to kill the fox or interact with it. They might have a way to bounce it. That's about it. No stone recluse. Reach whenever it mutates two counters. Okay, but it's tapped. Do we get the rescuer down to start blocking these things? They'll gain trample, right? Like, going wide is... It's okay. I, I think we're just supposed to hit the opponent really hard here, though. We can play a second fox. That's pretty sweet. Let's cycle the healer, because we might even end up casting the football crater for trample at some point, but unlikely since the opponent's very, very, very likely to make large mutate creatures. Down to 12. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, it's so huge. And what did you hit? Trumpeting Gnar. It's a thwee thwee. All right. Da -da -da -da. Charge. Cycle. Cycle. Epic gameplay moments. Jeez, what's... What's gonna happen next? Will it be a cycle? Hit him like a cycle. Just in case I drew into another settler, which is more likely than drawing another land, but what, what can you do? All right, opponent, can you win? You have a 10-10. Yeah! Going so ham. Look at the mutation. Look at the archipelago. Look at the Kogla. Look at them. Behold the beef. They are freaking Arby's over here. All right, bang. No fun at all, CGB. Shutting down the shenanigans. Fox. Temple mystery. Adventure gamer? Probably. Let's see how they... Let's see if they know what the fox say. Go to sleep, puppy. I ain't got time. I want to hear from the likes of you. Fabled passage. Alright. Here comes the fox. You block. I'll play the stinger. It's fine. Probably trying to mess with me, their fabled passage timing. I'm unflappable. So many people loving on this card, man. It sure has its moments. It's not bad against cycling. Like, I'm not gonna kill it. <laughs> I'm too busy trying to kill you. Whoa, dubs. Okay, this is some this is some intense ramp. Are we going to get Ugand? I think we might be. What you got? What you got? Nothing. You got nothing. I knew it. I knew it the whole time. Let's do some damage. 
damage. Ooh, do I want to go for blood one of these? Just slow the opponent down. Obviously, they're going to like sterics and things like that. Nah, that's that's trying to stop their deck. That's not what we do here. That's not how cycling deck work. Cycling deck plays cycling deck as game. End of story. More ramp? I'm into this. I'm, I am fine with all of that. Deep thinker, here comes the mana. They're doing something. Something's happening, guys. Something is going, something's changing. Any moment, we're gonna find out what's going on. That or the turn's just gonna pass. That was close. That was actually really close. I don't know what was so hard about that. I really have no idea. <laughs> Wait a minute, how many geese? Four? Is that three geese? Epic. <gasps> Alright, let's go get the mountain. Send squad. Uh-huh. We actually kind of want it in the graveyard, the, the stinger, or the flare. The opponent gets one turn here. They get to be as crazy as they want to be. They, they have to have another mutate card in their hand, and then they have to draw into more. They have to find their way to even more mutations after that. They're pretty dead. All right, mutate deck, do something incredible. Exile the graveyard or something, I don't know. They don't have any timeouts, by the way. They used all those in just staring at the wall, so let's see. Let's see if they can get out of this. They do have goose, they do have food. They can gain a little life. They're attacking. Ba -pra. Yeah, the food only takes them to nine. We can get exactly nine cards in the graveyard with the cycle. They're dead. They might have a counter or something. I can't imagine what it would be. With the amount of rope they're giving, it's like, come on now. Come on now. Maybe they found it. Did you get out of it? Let's find out. Flare you. I guess they can make an extra food, can't they? Yeah, they do have the mana because we carry added stat for two. Alright, let's see what they've got. 
Oh wait, but that taps all of their... Yeah, never mind. They have to tap everything this way and then the fox gets in. I actually did this right. I actually did this right. If I had attacked first, they could have blocked and then made food. And the fact that I did this before combat is a huge difference because now the fox hits them. <laughs> that's... That's accidental big brain brilliance right there. Straight, straight up. Didn't think of that. Thought I was just ending the game quicker, but turns out it was the right play. I always forget these make two mana. That's the problem. Yeah, go ahead. Eat the food. Do it. I dare you. I double dare you. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up and cycling. Woo! Wow. What what a deck. Um, <laughs> it has a little bit more play to it than I give credit for, much like Mono Red. I actually, in my heart, know that these decks can be interesting and fun to play. I just pick on them because it's... At this point, it's the character. But uh, this, this deck isn't as good as I think I expected. There's actually a lot of incidental graveyard hate out there, and I think people are pretty tired of losing to this deck. I think there'll be an outtakes video on CGB Gaming if you want to see some of the absolute nonsense that this deck ran into and how it got absolutely throttled. If you like seeing the deck lose more than effectively operate, maybe that outtakes video will be for you. And uh, yeah, let's go to the stats brought to you by MTG MTGA Assistant. See, it's got an A and a bigger A. It's like clever logo-y stuff. Unlike my logo, which is very, very basic as they come. But uh, MTGA Assistant, there's a link to download below if you want to track stats and information of that nature. The problem, this is the worst promo of all time. It actually doesn't track the, the ladder for 2021. Oops. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he'll track the other ladders <laughs> just download it it supports the channel worst promo ever leave me a comment if you watch this worst promo ever ah uh, cringe but people love the cringe don't they don't they love it when i mess up i don't know some people actively watch this so they can hate on me leave me your hateful comments i can take it i just might shadow ban you if i don't like what you say easy all right but anyway, MTG Assistant, uh, there's a link in the description. And if you click on it and download it, it does support the channel. So uh, I would appreciate it if you're looking for a deck tracker tool or you just want to try one out. If it's not for you, you can always uninstall it. Not a big deal. All right. Uh, and on that note, may I never have to play cycling again? Yeah, right. We're going to have to play this until this set rotates because it actually does it actually does have game the second people forget about cycling cycling will flare them in the face thank you for watching this video as always i will see you in the next video goodbye